Oh, figure out the trigger. There you go. <laughs> Good job. Left side ready. I want you to do some double taps. Okay. Firing! Hey everybody, this is Jerry Nines coming at you with sort of a, a video about responses to comments and some of the things that people have been talking about and telling me in my videos. Wanted to go ahead and wrap that around um, a, a sort of a recap to the shooting we did after we got the Springfield SA-35 back from Springfield for the second time. I hope to put an intro into this video where you'll see some, you know, like a shooting vignette, uh, just because I don't believe gun videos should be totally devoid of shooting. But beyond that, we're not gonna have any other shooting in this video. So if you're one of those people that just go to YouTube videos to watch gunfire, go ahead and stop right now. That's fine. We'll see you later. Uh, but I do have some exciting news to share uh, that I think those of you that have been contacting me about the SC-35, about uh, Browning High Powers in general, will be really excited to hear. So let's go ahead and start talking about it. First of all, I am usually gratified by the number of comments on my videos. Those of you that have chosen to interact with me have really put forth some really great advice, uh, really thought-provoking comments for the most part. And again, I want to thank you. I do try to read and respond to every comment, at least every comment that's productive, right? So with that, if you want to continue that dialogue, uh, please go ahead and continue. I get a lot out of it. And I think other people in the videos do. So one of the first things I want to talk about, so here we are, here is the Springfield SA-35. You know, one of the things that we had talked about, some people talked about it in the comments, I talked about it in some videos, is that yeah, my first 150 rounds or so out of this gun were with ammunition that was probably of a better caliber, pun intended, than maybe what I followed up with. So I started off with some uh, really sort of high quality target load from Winchester, as well as some PMC bronze. It was actually uh, jacketed hollow point ammunition. And then, we got into the Winchester white box and we started having some problems. Now, those problems seem to be failures to extract or they were failures to extract. And I'm really not convinced that they necessarily had much to do with the ammunition. Although many of you sort of took the opportunity in the comment section to really bang on Winchester white box that it wasn't a quality ammunition. We really can't judge the gun you know, against that ammunition. So, okay, what I did is I partially took that to heart. And after getting the Springfield SA-35 back from Springfield for the second time, what I did was I first took some Winchester White Box in five different 9mm firearms. In the last video, I can link to that here somewhere. You'll see they all were flawless feed and ejection with a, a myriad of other firearms. But then I did take the Springfield SA-35. I fed it a diet of higher quality ammunition, both full metal jacket and jacketed hollow point ammo from different manufacturers. And again, after the second time it was back from Springfield, it did really well with all those except for one malfunction that I'll talk about here in a minute. I then went ahead and gave the Springfield SA-35 another steady diet of Winchester white box and it also did fine. So while from a scientific method perspective, we probably should have tested the SA-35 more rigorously with some other ammunition before we sent it back, let's not forget I wasn't testing Winchester white box ammo, I was testing the SA-35. And you know, one of the comments that I got just recently and responded to uh, was something along the lines of, that they were, the, the, the commenter was surprised or perplexed that people were themselves surprised or perplexed that different firearms malfunction with different types of ammunition. And you know, my response to that person is the same that I'm gonna tell you, which is in essence that don't forget that this is a brand new 
factory firearm manufactured in either 2021 or 2022 and really especially from a from a running high power pattern pistol which itself is a military grade pistol there is absolutely no reason in the world why this firearm should malfunction from the factory with you know jacket i'm sorry not jacket hollow point but full metal jacket or ball ammunition from a major manufacturer that should be this gun and really any other nine millimeters bread and butter it should flawlessly feed and eject every time so the ammunition in this case is not really where the fault lay it really was with something going on in the firearm now i'm still a big fan of the sa35 some of you have talked to me in the comments and essentially said i'm a sucker because you know they've they've got my money and you know they gave me a gun that wasn't working well you know i i also believe that giving the ability to correct and the ability to do the right thing or make things right is is an important thing and so i've done that and i believe that springfield has done that i don't feel ripped off i have a a really nice browning high power pattern pistol that i got for you know right around 500 and change now that they've made it right it seems like the gun is running fine and it is going to serve at least for me as a bed for future modifications that brings me to another point which is some people and in fact i just got an email from a really nice gentleman last night who said oh you know if you look at some of the uh, bh spring solution videos on you could have easily rectified this by watch this video and watch this certain part of it and, and again much like i say to the people with ammunition that's not what i was trying to do here i wasn't trying to fix my browning high power pattern pistol the sa35 so much as i was expecting a quality firearm out of the box and expecting springfield armory to make it right which ultimately they did with maybe some bumps in the road and you can watch some of the earlier videos so i appreciate those of you that tried to give me some advice i've had at least seven or eight people say to me oh you know you should go and watch the bh spring solutions videos i've, I've watched them i'd watched them previous even to posting my first video about the Springfield SA-35. And in fact, some of their videos and some of the information in them was um, one, of the, one of the things that prompted me to start my own independent test of the pistol. Some other, and, and again, we're gonna talk a little bit more about BA Spring Solutions in a minute. Uh, some of the other things that people have said was, oh, get a CZ-75. Well, for those of you that said that, you may wanna check, you might just be a communist. In all seriousness, the CZ-75 is not a miracle pistol by any stretch of the imagination. It's a certainly well-regarded pattern pistol. Uh, some companies have done it really, really well. Some companies have done it rather poorly. Every pistol has some flaws or some things that maybe aren't perfect, but if it's perfect for you and you don't mind being a commie, get a CZ-75. You know, again, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with that, but but again, it's you know, it's 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 what your thing is. I'm not a CZ75 guy, never will be, but I appreciate the party line. I mean, the friendly advice. So with that, I'm going to segue into the fact that yeah, BH Spring Solutions. We hear a lot about them. They are certainly big in the Browning high power game, and they have a lot of videos out there, and people have been pointing me toward their videos. So. I want to go ahead and make sure that I'm being plain here when I say I didn't know the people at BH Spring Solutions before I started down my journey with the Springfield SA35. I knew them by reputation. I had watched their videos and they certainly are way more knowledgeable about the Browning High Power and the Browning High Power platform than I will ever be. They are truly experts when it comes to that particular genre of firearms. Having said that, as I said in one of my very first videos, you always want to be careful about taking advice from people without knowing exactly what they might gain from that advice. And BH Spring Solutions is in the business of selling products and services around the high power pattern of pistols. Does that mean that they're bad guys in any way? Absolutely not. I'm a big fan of capitalism and especially people that bring out a quality product or family of products and stand behind them as BH Spring Solutions seems to do. Everything that I've seen, everything that I've led to believe is that they provide a quality product and quality services. I think there are some things that they say 
that maybe I don't agree with 100%. I don't necessarily think, and I've talked about this before, that a floating sear lever on a Browning high power pattern pistol is necessarily the recipe for potential disaster that they tend to indicate in their videos. Again, just a difference of opinion, but you know what? A couple weeks ago, one of the gentlemen from BH Spring Solutions actually reached out to me via email. Uh, at first, I thought maybe he was gonna yell at me and say, hey, you know, I know more about this than you do, but he didn't. Super nice guy, his name is Mark. And what he did was he said, I've watched your SA35 videos. I like them, I like you as a presenter. Nice little plug for myself right there. Uh, but he did say that. And then he said, hey, you know what? We actually have a pistol that is another Browning high power pattern gun. It's not an SA35. It's actually made from Gerson, or it's, it's, uh, it's trademarked or trade named as Gerson, made in Turkey, imported by EAA. And we brought this gun in and we've given it sort of the full Monty in terms of custom enhancements, at least what we think are the need plus ultra when it comes to Browning high power pistols and Browning high power pattern pistols and what they need. So there was a little bit of back and forth. They made some really, really generous offers to me, even in terms of offering to work out any remaining bugs in my SA35. Uh, and they offered to do that for free, which is really nice of them. I actually have respectfully declined that because I wanna be able to really talk to you, my audience, and say this is what I believe about a particular firearm without sort of having anything clouded in terms of what I've gotten from someone else. But with that, part of that conversation was they were like, hey, we have this gun. Uh, how'd you like to take a look at it? No holds barred, no questions asked, and you just go ahead, ring it out, tell us what you think, and you know, put a video out there about it. Really, really brave on BH Spring Solutions part because I told them, if you wanna do that, that's fine. I'm not pulling any punches. And they said, fine and then they put their money where their mouth is and they sent me their BH Advanced Gerson pistol. So we're gonna go through this pistol uh, in another video in much more detail. We're gonna shoot it, we're gonna talk about it, stem to stern or front to back, and we're gonna take a deep dive into this pistol. We're gonna take it to the range. We're gonna do some head-to-head -head accuracy comparisons with the Springfield S835. And you know we'll just kind of we'll just kind of break it down. So I am in contact with some of the best in the game when it comes to Browning high power pattern pistols, and with that, I just want to end this video by talking a little bit about my specific Springfield SA35. Some people have said, "Oh, do this to the extractor, do that to the extractor." I didn't want to do that. I wanted to give Springfield the opportunity to go ahead and make this right. Additionally, in the comments, I've actually heard some people say, you know, I also have a Springfield SA35, and I noticed that after a number of rounds, not only did I start getting failures to extract, but my extractor, the actual hook in the extractor, started wearing down to, and this is a quote, to a nub. Some people have opined that maybe there was a heat treat problem on the extractors, or at least maybe a batch of extractors at the factory. Mark at BH Spring Solutions has told me that the extractor on the Springfield the extractor claw on the Springfield SA35 part made by Springfield is measurably different and measurably shallower than the original Browning High Power part. You know, I, I can only think that the extractor probably is uh, part of the problem. I have seen other videos, BH Spring Solutions videos about maybe the extractor channel or the spring channel for the extractor may have been rough and um, there may, may have been some machining errors there. And you know, that's also possible. My final closing point is going to be about the one malfunction that we saw during the last shooting session, which was overall very successful, but there was one failure to feed malfunction. Somebody very knowledgeable said to me that they feel that it's very, very possible that the extractor that is in my pistol now, in my Springfield SA35, may in fact be a Browning extractor. I am told that Springfield Armory acquired a number of actual 
browning high power extractors from a supplier and that they've been using those to remediate those guns as they come into the factory. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not going to go ahead and take my micrometer or my calipers to my extractor for a couple of different reasons. One, because I don't want to mess around with getting in or out of the gun. And two, because I don't really know that I'm trained to take measurements uh, that precise and render a judgment. And three, I don't have the specs of the Springfield part. So, you know, how would I, how would I know, right? But uh, it certainly is possible. I don't know. All I know is what they did seems to have fixed the problem. Now, the reason why that opinion came in was because of that one malfunction that we saw that was a failure to feed. The opinion that I heard was that when a Browning high power extractor has been installed in other Springfield SA-35 pistols, that at first it, its hook is a little bit too aggressive considering the surrounding geometry, which as we know is not dimensionally identical to real Browning high powers. So with that, uh, at least at first, it's a little bit too aggressive and it holds on to the preceding round a little too aggressively. And therefore there's that bobble in there. Now, I was told by this same party that I consider to be really well versed in what they're talking about, that that tends to fix itself almost immediately. In fact, we saw that very thing in the last video where uh, is there a real actual browning high power extractor in my SA-35 pistol? I don't know, but uh, that is a possibility. So with that, the next video, we're gonna be taking that BH Spring Solution Advanced Gerson MC-35, I think they call it, and we're gonna take that, we're gonna do, as I said, a really focused video on it, and then we're going to take it to the range. Uh, when that happens, I'll go ahead and put that video right here so that you can see it. And beyond that, you know, again, let me just say, if you're, in, if you're, if you're enjoying the channel, go ahead and subscribe down beneath. And if you feel like it, visit the links to Patreon if you wanted to provide a little support for the channel or the buy me a coffee link down below. Every penny that I might get uh, goes right back to the channel in terms of lighting, in terms of audio equipment, camera equipment, and also ammo. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to close by saying uh, one of you, uh, one of my, my loyal viewers in your comments said, uh, you know, hey, it, great, it looks like Springfield fixed your gun, but you know, for me, uh, even when you get to a thousand rounds isn't enough. Uh, I, I'm going to wait until you get like 2,500 rounds through the pistol. And I'm like, well, 9 millimeters is like 40 cents a round. So, you know, 2,500 times 0.4 is way more money than I got in my pocket. So, you know, if you'd like to see that sort of thing, hey, by all means, go ahead and start donating to the channel. And if not, stop spending my money. Uh, with that, this is Jerry and I is having a great time bringing you these videos about the SA-35 pistol, the upcoming BH Advanced pistol, and a whole bunch of other videos that we have planned. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you joining me here, and God bless America.